Hello, welcome to Bourbon and House. My name is Tristan Blair. I'm here at Elevate in Walnut Creek, California, and tonight I am reviewing the Elmer T. Lee Single Barrel Kentucky Straight Bourbon, as well as the Elmer T. Lee Commemorative Single Barrel Kentucky Straight Bourbon. I was very, uh, very blessed to have been able to buy one of these bottles, which was a one-time release honoring the death of Elmer T. Lee, who died about a month, or excuse me, a year and three months ago. Um, he was a pioneer in the bourbon industry. He was born in 1919 on a tobacco farm uh, in Kentucky, born and raised in Kentucky, graduated high school in 36, worked for a shoe company until 41 uh, when the war happened, uh, enrolled, became a bombardier, and um, flew planes all the way until 45 in Japan. Uh, I mean, he, he did it all. He, uh, honorably discharged in 46, uh, returned home, studied engineering, and then was hired at the George T. Stagg Distillery shortly thereafter, which turned into the Buffalo Trace Distillery in 1999. So that being said, this is a Buffalo Trace distilled whiskey. And Elmer T. Lee had been around the block, if you know what I mean, with the bourbon industry. I mean, very few people worked for George T. Stagg Distillery when it uh, became Buffalo Trace. Uh, that in and of itself makes him very unique. But what makes him kind of a legend in the bourbon world and world of whiskeys in general is that he was the inventor of the single barrel bourbon which in 84 came out as Blanton's, which many people know, many people still drink to this day. Very cherished, very, a really, really nice bourbon, which I'll be reviewing later on. He was responsible for that single barrel coming out and the whole concept of that. And yeah, this, uh, this is, uh, one on the left is his standard single barrel. And then one on the right is the commemorative. Um, this bottle that's a commemorative is three proof higher than the standard, which is 90 proof, commemorative being 93, which is also an homage to the age of his, uh, his age when he died. So it's all very, very tied in. And I thought they did a really good job with that whole concept of, of really honoring him through his bourbon. It's a rye mash bill. It's one of uh, Buffalo Trace's rye mash bill. It's considered a very, very highly sought after, now very allocated bourbon. If you can find this, I highly recommend it. It's about $30, if, which is really, really good price for a, a bourbon. This one is gonna be more if you can find it, which will be difficult as time goes on and more and more because it's a one-time release. That's it, they will never make this again. It was a one-time thing because he passed away. That being said, I've seen it in stores locally in the Bay Area for around $60. It had a retail price for around $40. I got it for around $35 to $40 when it came out. But if you find it, you're it be, expect to pay at least double that because it's really going to go up and up and up and up as time goes on. So, that being said, I'm going to start with the Elmer T. Lee on the left side. Up until basically his death, he uh, would do tours at Buffalo Trace uh, once a week. And he was very involved for decades and decades, um, given the timeline that I previously told you. He would actually hand select, uh, hand pick barrels for this bourbon um, very close up until his death. And he would call those barrels the honey barrels. Or his, you know, his, his favorite barrels, the ones he thought tasted the best, and I think that's really, really cool that he was that involved um, right up, up, up to his passing. On the nose, you get uh, holiday Christmas spices, uh, caramelized spices, cigar, uh, not too bold, very light, um, 
some tobacco leaf dried, some blueberries, dark purple grapes, chocolate dipped bananas, Get some toffee brittle, uh, some uh, cinnamon raisin bread. It's a very, for $30, this is definitely a, a true bargain. And that's taking it down a notch. It's a, it's a, it's a true find if you can find this. As I mentioned before, it's almost an allocation now, so a lot of stores only get this in a couple times a year. The store I usually go to to buy this gets it in three or four times a year now. It's becoming harder and harder to find. If you find this, I highly recommend it. As you can see on here also, there's a sticker that says Jackson's. This was a hand-picked barrel. Uh, it was barrel number 11. And the palette. Ice smooth entry. You get oak right, in, right from the beginning. Uh, spice mid to back palette. Some chocolate powder, a little bit of coffee, uh, maple pine, some rye comes through from the nose to the palate. Uh, it's a viscous mouthfeel. It definitely covers the tongue, very layered. Toasted red and black spices, you get some cigar from the nose. Um, honey and sugar roasted almonds too, I really, really get that. I remember those because my grandmother would eat those and have them in a bowl at her house a lot. Um, that real sugary uh, textured over the nut shell really comes through on that palate. Beautiful oak and spice in the finish, very mouth watering, long and pungent. Um, you get some pepper and coffee, some good spice, uh, but not too complex. It's, it's very, very gentle. Again, these are not cat. This is 90 proof and 93 proof. And now for the commemorative. The nose, you get a lot of soft, warm caramel, some cherry syrup, a lot of green apple in the front, a light spice on the back of the nose, you some vanilla, cake frosting, um, some cinnamon stick, lemon rind, raisin. I'm reading this from notes, by the way. Uh, some soft oak, gingerbread cookies. It's more of a, uh, this compared to this, it's more of a more dessert forward with more dark fruits, I feel. And the palette. Get some of that green apple skin. Um, cinnamon spice, mid palette to end. Uh, peppermint bark, chocolate covered graham crackers. And that was very a very particular thing I got. Which is very nostalgic, being that I used to eat those a lot as a kid. A really particular there. Uh, nutshells, raisin bread, slight chalkiness on the end, and raisin candies. Uh, chocolate covered caramels, kind of. Uh, finish is moderate to long. Definitely, this, this one definitely has a longer finish. Medium spice layers, oak tannins, beautifully wooded. You get some chocolate. Vanilla and caramel, those classic bourbon notes, definitely come through. Um, by and large, I would say this one, this one you get more of dark fruits, more dried menthol, more of that cigar, coffee, pepper. Everything's a little bit darker. Whereas with this one, it's more you know bright fruits, caramel, sweet. Vibrant and youthful, more, and more yellow fruits. It's the best way I can compare the two. Both very similar, but you can definitely tell the difference between with this three proof right here.
Highly recommend this bourbon. Uh, it's definitely a staple for me. I always have this at my bar. If you can find this bottle, as a as a bourbon aficionado, you should definitely want this bottle. If you ever see it, definitely pick it up because it will only become harder and harder to find. Uh, as well as this bottle being allocated. So I highly recommend this. Again, another great effort from Buffalo Trace. I hope this continues to have a lot of good quality even after Elmer's passing. And it's definitely, he would be very proud of, uh, of both of these bourbons. So, cheers.